Hey, you're my brother. It's cold out here, sir. Yes, it is kind of, but you know, it's not windy. <laughs> you're pretty cool anyway, man. Thank you very much, brother. Sucks out here on this windy. Cold, I can deal with it. When the wind comes through, forget about it. Okay, give us a tune. Please. Mm -hmm. Get one of these. Ah, uh, hand warmer. Sounds good, man. <laughs> today and it is cold it's late January 2022 we're gonna run in here to chime and read and we're gonna see an exhibition by Bill Jensen stay tuned The title of the show is Stillness Flowing. We'll come through and do our sweep of the installation. schmooze my way into a paper list, thank goodness. <clears throat> we'll start out looking at this pair. Now I guess these, they've got these listed as together, so I imagine this might be a diptych. Transgressions, second study, 2015 oil on linen, and he's calling it a diptych. 28 by 47. Well, uh, I was going to say as we dropped into the back room, Bill and his wife Margaret were there with Fong Bui and uh, some other people I didn't recognize because they had their masks on. Uh, Bill and Margaret are like the uh, <laughs> the mom and pop of the uh, Williamsburg art scene. They're people that uh, have created and maintained a little community there for, gosh, maybe 40 years now, something like that. This is titled Blue Coppola, 2020-2021, Oil on Linen Triptych. Well, when I initially uh, stuck my head in the door and glanced at this from the uh, 
entrance, I was thinking, boy, this is, uh, this is quite a change for Bill. I'll give you a brief uh, backstory on Bill. I first uh, I think bumped into his work. About the first year I was in New York, there was a controversial show that was curated by Barbara Rose titled Painting of the 80s. And a, people, a lot of people thought that was a little audacious because it was 1979. And Bill was one of the artists that was featured in the show. It ended up becoming a very important show as far as the return of painting and uh, some of those ideas. And uh, there were a lot of great artists. Bill was one of them. Uh, Elizabeth Murray. I think it was all together. There was probably about 25, 30. Thornton Willis was in the show. Anyway, uh, that was the first time I saw Bill's work. Okay, so uh, this is another thing that's kind of new is his mandala forms. I was looking at the press release and they were saying that he's invented this particular thing, calling, he's calling this a, a double yin-yang. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking is that uh, there are some uh, figurative references here that are pretty uh, explicit. I know Bill is actually known going way back, like I say, back to 1979 and even before that. He's been known as a, uh, an abstract painter, I guess. You could even say that he's carried on a lot of the metaphysical work of the uh, Abstract Expressionists. It's titled Transgression Third Study, 2015 Acrylic on Linen Diptych. Oh, that's interesting. It's acrylic. Anyway, as I became more engaged with the, uh, the Williamsburg art scene and got to know Bill and Margaret, and a little coterie of other painters that were kind of gathering around them, people like Chris Martin, Kathy Bradford, Rick Briggs, and a whole lot of other people. There's Margaret. Hi, Margaret. We're gonna get the uh, secret pass to the back room. The, the painting that is the key to the mandala puzzle. This is it, huh? 1977. 1977 is called Redon. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> okay. Well, he's a bashful guy. That was that was stressful for him. Uh, Bill explained to me that uh, okay, this was a painting that was sold, and uh, he did it in 1977. He bought it back, <laughs> he was saying, and it wasn't cheap. But uh, he looked at it and was thinking, and suddenly uh, he started thinking that he could start putting the mandalas into a lot of the different paintings. All right. Okay, this is titled Vastness Flowing 2021 Oil on Linen Diptych. Well, uh, so as I was saying, I'm getting involved with the Brooklyn art scene. This is mid late 90s. I got to know Chris Martin pretty well. I bumped into Kathy Bradford. I uh, had a little show at a gallery there called Damn Stool Traeger. Okay, so we've got our circles here, and then some uh, just flat areas of color, and this, uh, 
They were saying that it's getting very, they're going to shut the gallery down early tonight, so I've got to make a running commentary on a lot of this. Wheel Rim Compass 3 for Wang Wee 2019. Oil on linen. Uh, well, they talk about Bill making a lot of his own paint. I guess he grinds the pigments, maybe goes and collects pigments in various places. He does some, spends some time in Europe and uh, he probably goes to some of the pigment producers over there and gets stuff. This is a large piece. They were saying that um, some of these some of these are the largest paintings that Bill's ever done. And even so, uh, he does have a tendency to do the diptych thing, so he's not painting single panels. And there's always these little uh, kind of irregular sizes that he abuts against each other. Also, uh, as I was saying, he makes a lot of his own paint and does various things. I was talking about another artist, one of my other reports, titled David Reed, who does a lot of uh, mixing and using various kinds of mediums and various chemical things. And Bill does a similar kind of thing, except he's doing most of it with oil. And I also know that Bill does a lot of printmaking. Well, I was thinking there's 25, maybe more than 25 paintings in the show. So maybe we'll just slide down the the walls and make some random comments. Okay, so I guess this grouping of paintings are all part of the Wheel Rim Compass series. Well, I was talking about Bill, this is one of the people that has sort of carried on the work of the abstract expressionist. Okay, this painting is 39 by 31. And by that, I kind of mean that, um, like Harold Rosenberg said, the, uh, the picture plane is now an area where an event happens. It's not about recording or imitating nature. It's wheel rim composition number five. So a lot of it is about uh, what people do with paint, how they play with paint, what happens to paint. There's a certain kind of magic intent with paint. can look and see that uh, there are a lot of interesting things happening here. Also, I'm noticing that a lot of these paintings, he's gotten two or three years of work in on them. It's titled Witch Child. 2019 to 2020. 28 and a quarter by 49. I think one of the other uh, nice things about Bill's paintings is that uh, you kind of stand back and you get one kind of simple image and then as you step forward and start to pay attention to his surfaces and the areas that look like they're monochrome, you start to see a whole uh, Gamut of layers. Uh oh, they're looking at me like this is. I'm sure they want to run people out. So we're just going to uh, skip.
skim over the top of this. Okay, it's a very rich piece. Actually looking at some of these and uh, thinking about the surfaces that uh, Jean Dubuffet would get in some of his uh, Scrofito uh, compiling paintings. Let's go in the next gallery. Okay, these are the bitter chant pieces. Okay, we're gonna uh, <laughs> scoot right along. Uh, I was talking about the fact that Bill makes a lot of his paint, grinds his own paint. And if you look at something like this, uh, and you know anything about painting, you realize this stuff might look like he's just sort of scraping things in there, but the, the colors and the surfaces, the various kinds of sheens and finishes and matte versus shiny things are very uh, complex. Bitter chant number three. You see there's some uh, scraping in there. It's 37 by 29. Uh, one of the things that Bill was known for is his uh, admiration for Albert Pinkham Ryder. And uh, That may be where I kind of started to connect with him. I think Fong curated a show out in Williamsburg when it was starting to take off, maybe the late 90s. And uh, it was all about a bunch of artists that were influenced by Ryder. This is Bitter Chant number eight. 40 by 30. Well, one of the things that uh, I've always appreciated about Ryder was that a lot of the work was smaller, intimate. Bitter chant number 11. So I like the way he kind of uh, builds up his paint surfaces with a lot of different incidences and then sort of uh, glazes or stains in across the top of that that kind of accentuates the the materiality of the paint. Bitter Chant 6, 32 by 25. You know, some of these actually look like he's kind of used them as tabletops. That looks like a uh, ring from a coffee cup or something. This is Oracle Bones, 2017 to 2020. 28 and a half by 37. Oh, look, he's got a collage in there of a drawing stuck on it. I don't know, I'll have to ask Bill at some point if he uh, spends a lot of time sanding these or whether he scrapes them with a knife. And I know there was a whole series of uh, bone paintings that he did maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Another interesting series I've seen a few pieces from recently, well, in the last three years. Hushed Mountain for Ron Gorchov. Well, Ron was another beloved 70s 
saint of the painter's world here in New York. It's 36 by 32. I think Ron passed away. Gosh, at this point, it's like almost a year ago. I think that uh, Bill has done a whole series of these paintings, and I'm not sure, but at some point we were talking about pigments. And he happened to mention dioxazine purple. It's called Dark Enigma, 2019-2020, oil on 32 by 23. And gosh, I don't know whether this is dioxazine or not. But uh, yeah, Bill is a very sensitive painter and so uh, he'll be playing with pigments and uh, suddenly start to notice strange things happening. Uh, the way the pigments start to reflect light, uh, how they change colors if they're applied thin as opposed to being applied thick, how they kind of change when you're mixing them with oil as opposed to turpentine or paint thinner. This is titled Absent No Gate Gateway 2014-2016. 53 by 119. So that's about four and a half by ten feet. Well, you should probably go back and uh, look at some of the other painting shows by Bill that we have on file. I think there might be couple of these paintings in there. And this goes to what I was talking about, him using the, the multiple panels to build up the size of his canvases. And if you notice, we can catch some of that, just the way that the light hits that dark violet panel. You can see that changes a lot another bone piece. You gotta run me out, okay. This is called The Great Image Has No Form. And Chian Bones, Lazarus, 2018 to 2020. Well, we played that out as long as we could, folks. So this is James Calm reporting. Um, Bill Jensen, stillness flowing. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say, as always, thank you, Kate, and happy 2022, people. Thank you. Is that you, Jimmy Celesta? Yes, Celeste. Celeste. Thanks, Jimmy.